The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for the Diagnostic Trading Hour with your host, Daryl Martin. Martin. All right, folks, go on here to the Diagnostic Trader. I'm your host, Daryl Martin, right here on TFNN. Don't forget, you can listen to us anywhere on your mobile phone at tfnn.mobi. So another day, another dysfunctional DC. So uh, Senate's working to put their plan together. House, not one to be shown up, comes up with yet another plan and puts that out there. The plans are very similar, but of course they both have um, their you know differences, which may or may not be. It'll be overcome by the October 17th deadline. So of course the uh, Treasury will not run out of money immediately. It has over 30 billion um, in store, which should last for about a week, according to Goldman Sachs. And uh, Goldman Sachs, uh, one of the reports I read, is expecting that there actually won't be a final resolution until the weekend. So uh, basically we'll be waiting until Monday. Be careful in holding those positions over the weekend. Anyways, uh, but you know, until then, there'll be plenty of up and down movement on every little news report. And uh, it'll be nice to get back to the technicals and versus the, this constant news barrage that's coming out. But let's check out where the market's at right now. We got the S&P down four points right now. We have the NASDAQ up uh, 0.75. We have the Russell is down seven points. The Dow is currently down 45 points on the day. Gold's down five bucks on the day. Silver is down almost 1%. Copper is uh, currently pretty much flat, just up a, you know, a few ticks there. We got oil down 72 cents. We have natural gas down at 1%. Corn is down or up 5.5, while soybeans is down 4.75. Euro dollar currently down 67 pips with pound dollar down 7. Aussie dollar is up 34 pips. Euro yen down 65. Dollar yen is flat on the day as well as pound yen. And we got the dollar cad up 22 pips with the dollar franc up 45. There is some movement. There is some definite volatility. But it's, uh, you know, it's, it's just a very weird day with everything going on. So, like I said, it'll be nice to get back to normal markets. But uh, checking this out right here, we got gold. It fell on down right into the morning pit open. It was at one at deviation level for it ran on back up. There's been a lot of implied volatility, but there's also been some just crazy swings in those last few minutes. So I've been uh, holding back a little bit on my EPC trades just because it's been a little bit uh, crazy with everything that's going on with the uh, debt ceiling and the news. But uh, I have found some good opportunities. I've taken them. Some of those have worked out rather well. And uh, you know, there's just a variety of trades. So we'll see if we can uh, find anything today that we might be able to take advantage of also. And uh, so let me pull up the scanner. And if you don't have access to this, get access to it over on TFNN. But uh, right here, checking out the uh, binary scanner. and going to see, hey, is there any possible uh, you know setup that we might want to hop in on? And so what I do is I'll go in here and put a... 65 to 95, okay, for my uh, risk reward for potential premium collection plays. And if I think they're too close, don't forget, I could always go, you know what, that's way too close. Well, if that's way too close, then I'm so nervous about it that I might want to do the opposite of that trade. So, you know, I can look on either side and figure out what's going to, you know, be the, the best possible solution to see if anything's there. So right now, nothing is showing up. Um, on the radar there for gold for the 1.30 p.m. expiration. By the way, if you ever don't see anything and you wonder, hey, is something wrong, hit reset filters. And you go, oh, wow, okay, they are there. But there really is nothing within that range that we specified. And you can go over here and we can pull up. We can look at, you know, where is gold? Is that one, let's see, what is it, 1270.8 at the moment. So moving to really, uh, or 1270.5 now. So, but it has had some little spike ups on there and so like I said if it's too close you may decide to do something else but 1270 would still put us at a $62 risk 1273 would be a pretty big move looking at the chart and gold really is traveling pretty heavily sidewards at the moment and uh, not getting enough premium in there for a butterfly so looking at a gold chart right here we see how gold just moving sidewards got a little spike right there but um, overall you know not really it's like right up to that 1273 level but not necessarily uh, pushing right through it so, you know, there's a low, basically a low uh, risk, high return play where you could go in and grab, like, say, a 1273, and you could look to sell it for, you know, say, $20 more, or you could, you know, be looking to sell for, you know, quite a bit more as a possibility. That's probably about the only play I'd be considering right now 
based on the movement of gold as I look at gold starting to edge a little bit higher, but uh, nothing with a strong conviction. And uh, so anyways, check these plays out. They're pretty cool. They give you, like I said, just a lot of different options when you're trading um, over on Nadex, but you want to be able to really narrow that down. But I don't really see, like I said, our, our preferred premium collection play lining up just yet. Uh, the, you could either literally, you could go either way on this play. So uh, with today, like I said, the volatility, the, there's more implied volatility than normal. Okay, so meaning we're getting binaries that are further away for better prices. Well, if it's the reverse, if we're getting binaries that are really close to the market for a really low um, income on premium collection, then we may, like I said, go in and do a trend trading, expiration trend trading, where I go in and I'd, I'll buy it for like 10 or 15 bucks. You know, so that way it's a really high payout on the trade. Maybe sell it for 80, you know, if I buy it for, you know, $15. Um, but like I said, right now we're seeing, we're seeing more implied volatility built in, and so they're further away, which usually means better for premium collection. But right now we've just seen these weird spastic spikes happening and uh, in the market, and that's making it very difficult to judge and trade these uh, premium collection trades or even the trend trading trades. Because um, the spikes, I mean, you have to be getting in, and you better be ready to hop out of that thing when you make you know, 20, 30 bucks on it, because it'll just fly up and fly right back down really quick. So, like I said, what happened right here, you see all the spikes happening in gold. And uh, now if you can combine that with a volume spike at a deviation level, you know, then you have a, you know, a nice trade. Like you can see right here, we had a nice volume spike on gold. We had it right at the settlement after it retraced one full deviation. So if it went down a deviation, and then you know, we had a volume spike there, and then went up a deviation, we had a volume spike there right at the settlement deviation level. Again, I like them best when it's a one deviation move. And then you see how it just sort of settled right down. So that would have been, you know, a great trade to go short right there. Possibly do a, a trend trading, premium collection trade, um, or, you know, short a spread, or, you know, just short the gold futures if you're a futures trader. So or maybe even GLD if you trade, you know, stocks. So using that simple spike deviation level reversal trade. All right, so that gets us caught up there on gold. Let's go ahead and let's check out what we have this week. It's a little bit different week. And while that's up, I'll throw up the deviations for you. So you can see uh, some of the markets here. But I um, wanted to go through and look at, let's see, uh, the pound and what happened with it last night and uh, any possibilities that you might be able to take advantage of that and also talk about other news that's coming out this week. It's pretty low at Newsweek. Since we have the government shut down, a lot of the reports aren't being released. And since they're not being released, we're not getting to take advantage of a lot of the usual reports that we would be able to get, you know, hop in and take advantage of. And also we're seeing sort of lower volatility on a lot of the releases as well, even the ones that uh, normally have really high volatility on. So, and uh, this is sort of one of those, you know, it only happened, like, what was it, you know, back in the 90s, uh, the last time we actually had a full shutdown. So it's just not something that uh, you really have stats on because it doesn't happen often enough. But uh, we can see right here, we got to move up 33 pips, and then we got to move down off the news release. This was the CPI off the pound. Uh, the expectation was 2.6, came in at 2.7, so pretty much at expectations. And, um, and if we go down for the two hours after, because that's what we're measuring, we got about 94 pips down. And if we go take it from the release to the low here, got about 62 pips. We had an expectation of about 70 pips high to low. We got 94 pips high to low um, for that, you know, that two hours following the news. And uh, so we definitely stayed within those expectations. You should be able to be profitable on that trade or at least uh, break even if you would have made sure that you did choose, you know, once with enough time um, to expire because you could have chosen the 7 o'clock. Um, potentially the 6 o'clock would have worked as well for you. So you would have got about 50 pips on that. So if you had $25 work on both sides, you would have basically came out with a, uh, a $25 profit on the trade. And, again, what I'll do on these trades, on these simple news trades, and they really are simple, is I'll go in. And I usually use the spreads, okay, for news. And spreads just like trading, you know, any other market, you know, buying, selling. But when I choose the spreads, then I see here, if we chose the pound, then I'll go down here, and then I'll find two spreads that, you know, line up. So let's say this is, uh, we'll find the 3 o'clock, for instance. And we'll choose, say, 59.20 there and 59.20 there. And then what you'll notice is you have... A trade that can make money if the market goes up because the one you bought. You have a trade that makes money if the market goes down because the one you sold. But the benefit is they have defined capped risk, sort of like a call or a put. And so the you know the one that you bought stops losing money, and the one that you sold, you know, makes the money that the one 
to cover the one you bought, plus it continues to make money. So if the market moves in your favor either way, and you really don't care what direction the market moves when you do these trades, you just care that it moves. And so that's why I really like trading the news with Nadex spreads as a straddle, because I'm not really directional, but I know what market to focus on. I have a decent expectation of movement, and I'm able to uh, use the defined risk leverage in Nadex to take advantage of the move. So very simple, like very simple way to trade. Uh, but just doing the math can be a little bit difficult. That's why I use a scanner, because it helps me find the uh, best possible trade in the shortest possible time frame. Now, uh, so that was the report that we had there. Let's see. Uh, I'm trying to see if anything else. This major moving. We had the Aussie uh, meeting minutes, so we'll go over and we'll just look at the impact on that real quick. And that was not a uh, just a major mover. We weren't expecting a whole lot to come out of it. Every once in a while, of course, there could be a surprise. But uh, just like I said, it isn't a it's a meeting minute one, so it's really also hard to uh, actually track because usually you want to have stats like numbers versus you know words and verbiage. And uh, so that announcement came out last night at 8:30. And we can see right here, the announcement came and the announcement went, and uh, pretty much no movement as expected. So this would have been another trade. One of the things we talked about last night is going in and possibly doing a butterfly on the trade, like into the news, simply because it doesn't move that much that often. So if you went at 8.30, and right before that, you went in and you, know, you basically sold above and below, it would have expired out at 9 o'clock, and you would have been able to have a nice profitable trade just on the market not moving. So if you think the market's really going to move one way or the other, you don't know which, you just choose a straddle. If you think the market really isn't going to be impacted by a news announcement, then you do a butterfly. And a butterfly is where you go in here and you, on the binary scanner, you pick a strike above and below the market. So for instance, you could go in and say, you know, let's say like right here at 8 a.m. I hop in, sorry, a little bit further back. Uh, Right here at 8 a.m., I hop in and I say, you know, I think the market is, uh, you know, going to stay within, you know, a range of 95, 30, and I go down here, you know, say 95. And so I put that trade on, and what I'm doing is I'm saying I'm going to buy this one, so I'm saying it'll expire ab above it, and I'm selling the 95, 30, saying it'll expire below it. And as long as it does expire by that buy close right here at 9 o'clock, then my trade is profitable. So it's a very cool, again, very simple way to trade. And uh, it's two you know, strategies that you simply apply. One, if you think it's not going to move, and the other one, if you think it is going to move. Uh, we got the monetary policy meeting minutes. Those came out. Uh, Bernanke had a little speech. Uh, nothing major out of that. Um, let's see here. He wasn't really trying to do any big policy things. It was just one of his uh, random guest speeches. And then uh, like I said we had all the pound announcements, and then... Let's see here. We have FOMC Dudley. He spoke this morning. We got the CPI for the New Zealand dollar. Uh, make sure you're aware of that if you're a New Zealand dollar trader. That comes out at 5.45 p.m. tonight. And we'll go ahead and wrap up. There's one other, maybe two other major announcements that you're going to be aware of for the week that are scheduled. And uh, we'll talk about those and the stats on them when we get back from this break. says you can't take it with you. TFNN says you can. With your mobile device and TFNN's live radio streams, TFNN has put it all in the palm of your hands. No special apps to download. No subscription fees for live radio or Tiger TV streams. We say you can. Now let's go over to the dollar because the dollar is going to be the generator. It is the generator of basically higher dollar, lower market. And what the dollar has done, and this whole uptrend, folks, has just gone sideways. The way it works, folks, is this. We say you can. The Tiger Financial News Network. Smart investors and professional traders know you can. TFNN.com. Educating investors.
with the launch of Tiger TV. TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, David White, Larry Pesamento, Andy Hecht, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV. For your viewing pleasure, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is the only software package available with a built-in Gartley and Butterfly Pattern Scanner that will scan thousands of stocks, ETFs, and indices each day to find these patterns and then make them available to you with just a single click of your mouse. Tom O'Brien and Dave White will be hosting a live event for all Art of Timing the Trade Chart subscribers on October 16th at 6.30 p.m. Eastern. And for a limited time, we're offering a promotion where new signups can gain access to this powerful charting software, as well as the live study session workshop coming up this Wednesday night for only $1. That's right, $1 for the whole month with the class included. Remember, this offer is only good till this coming Wednesday night when the workshop takes place live with Tom O'Brien and Dave White, so don't delay. For all the details, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Patterns, profits, and peace of mind. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's trading newsletter. Patterns, profits, and peace of mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you the edge you've been looking for. Try Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind absolutely free for two full weeks. That's an $85 value. Yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. And get the edge you've been looking for. Investors, Taz Market Research delivers to its subscribers expert commentary on the analysis of 50 different markets each day. Get this invaluable and timely information through the daily market research videos Taz Market Research produces each day before 9 a.m. The video analysis will include reports on currencies, interest rates, indices, metals, energies, grains, and more. You'll be able to gauge where high profitability setups are in each of the markets. Receive a free two-week trial subscription to Taz Market Research videos on the front page of TFNN.com. Daryl takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Let's go ahead and check out uh, what other news we got going on this week. Uh, Let's we'll see. Tomorrow, uh, we're going to have the climate count change, the unemployment rate coming out of Britain. Not usually a major mover, but uh, just be aware that will have at least a you know, 20, 30 pip impact on um, you know pound FX pairs. Same thing, uh, CAD manufacturing index, 20 to 30 pip move, probably expected around 8.30 um, in the morning. Not so much a new trade event. And then um, we have a 4 to 6 a.m. This is going to be uh, the big trade for for the pound is the retail sales number coming out. And uh, basically, if that number comes in, you know, above or below half percent, like if it comes in like at zero or one, then we expect a pretty dramatic move on the pound itself. And so we would expect, uh, but that does happen. Um, that'd be a great straddle. And the stats on that trade for you, uh, just to put the pieces together is 70% of the time it moves 50 pips and it moves an average of okay so again 70% of the time it moves 50 pips and it moves an average of 50 pips within two hours so the majority of the time it's moving 50 pips so that would definitely be one trade that you could look at as a possibility um, to go in and straddle uh, it's really the only other viable straddle this week but you could check that one out um, as one that you might want to go in and put on where you buy a spread above and sell a spread below Give yourself, you know, enough time. So the report comes out at 4:30. You get in somewhere around 4 o'clock, and then um, as you do that, then you uh, are able to set your take profits at a one-to-one -one risk reward ratio on that trade. 
So it looks like gold is starting to move up. Like I said, we're getting to some little, you know, spikes right here in the bars. Moving on up towards that 1273. So if uh, we are able to go ahead and go up and breach that, uh, then like I said, you can get in. You know, it was like at $10 a second to go, get out. And these things move really fast, okay? The uh, the price changes dramatically fast, just on a matter of a couple ticks. And so that that is an advantage, and it's a disadvantage. You've got to make sure you're, you know, you're using that advantage correctly. But um, it's it's pretty cool because you can go in and you can in those last five or ten minutes you can get some very big fast moves on these markets that you normally just wouldn't be able to get on any other market. Uh, it really maximizes that leverage during that time frame. The longer it is until expiration, the slower you'll actually see that move uh, be right there on gold or any other contract that you're trading binaries on. But you'll uh, you'll already see them things go from ten to forty. I mean, in a matter of like three or four ticks. So some definite opportunities in there if you're a fast scout trader. That would definitely be something you wouldn't be focusing on. If you uh, don't like picking direction, then check out the straddles or do the binary butterflies. But that really is our major report for the week. Uh, and it's it's interesting because usually we have so many more reports. But, uh, you know, light and load with the government not reporting stuff right now. So hopefully they'll report a solution. So, right. And uh, we can move on and uh, let the regular markets take over. Now, I'd like to go ahead and uh, just give you a quick review. You know, is there anything potentially on the board next week that you want to be aware of um, going into, you know, this upcoming week here? And we have a lot of stuff on the list, and it's all tentative. <laughs> so um, a lot of things building up. I mean, there's about 30 reports um, built up just for Monday uh, if they resolve the uh, crisis. So let me uh, show you this list here from Forex Factory. It's pretty wild um, when you look at it. But these are all the reports that are tentative to be released. We got uh, building permits, core CPI, core retail sales, PPI, retail sales, trade balance, CPI, core PPI, housing starts, employment prices, non-farm employment change, unemployment rate, average hourly earnings, you know, long-term purchases, capacity utilization, I mean, existing home sales, industrial production, federal budget balance, factory orders. I mean, all these things right here, you know, Tentatively, we're just waiting on the report to find out, you know, the, the economic fundamental measurements happening in the market right now. So um, as they come out, then we'll see if we actually get these reports or not based on the government shutdown. Now, uh, moving on forward into the week, you know, we have some other reports that will be coming out. We're going to have the core retail sales coming out of Canada on Tuesday. I'll update you on Monday numbers on that. We have the CPI number coming out of Australia as well. And then on Wednesday, um, Bank of Canada is going to have their rate statement, their overnight interest rate coming out, along with their monetary policy report. So, And they'll have a press conference. So it's like a 10 o'clock, a rate statement, 10.30, policy report, 11.15, press conference. So they're, all that's coming together. And we'll get the bank rate votes and the facility votes out of Britain um, early that morning on Wednesday at 4.30, talking about how far they're going to move. Um, let's see here. So it looks like we're scrolling on past that. It's moving into that 1273. So if you got in that, if you decided to take that trade, you might want to be looking to take uh, either some or all your profit at this point. Um, and again, talking about the uh, binary, we're looking at at 1273 right there on gold as it's moving into with that same spike. So nice, uh, nice solid moving gold right into the close. And I said if I was going to do anything, I'd probably want to go long and check that out as it's just moving up. All right. So uh, that gets us caught up with uh, part of the week. We'll catch up on the rest of the week and talk about uh, some different ways that you can play this government crisis on Nadex. Stay right there. We'll be right back after this break. Has the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com.
or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock in option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. Andy Hecht, the host of the Commodities Hour, recently launched his newsletter service, the Technomental Commodity Report, and only six weeks in, Andy has already recorded a triple-digit winner. Andy advised his subscribers to purchase a long-term call option at 46 cents on July 11th, and then sent out a special update Friday, August 16th, advising his subscribers to close that position at $1.40. That's a 204% profit in just five weeks. The Technomental Commodity Report by Andy Hecht is released each Thursday morning, and right now you can get a month-long free trial to this subscription while locking in the low introductory rate of only $39 a month. Andy Hecht has been a commodities trader for over three decades. Let his experience work for you. Sign up for your month-long free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report today at TFNN.com. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. All right, folks, welcome on back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hours. We see it did expire above 1273, so that long trade there would have worked out great for you if you're able to take advantage of it. Let's go ahead and, like I said, check out uh, the upcoming news. So we got uh, half of it uh, knocked out already, covered, got you covered through Wednesday, and we want to go ahead and knock out the last part of next week. And then with that, we'll be able to go in and talk about just, you know, what are some of the things you can do? Because there's just a lot of volatility going on, and um, what can you do to take advantage of it? So, um, taking you on to Thursday next week, we got uh, the flash manufacturing PMIs coming out. It usually has a decent impact, but again, it's about a 20 or 30 pip move. And the U.S. unemployment claims, as well as new home sales, supposedly will be back on schedule there at 10 a.m. on Thursday. And then uh, followed by natural gas inventory. And then on Friday, we're going to have the preliminary GDP, usually a very strong mover for the pound. And uh, so that number will be released uh, next Friday there. Um, for the uh, British pound, be a, a good straddle trade usually. And uh, then we'll have some other meetings, um, G7 meetings kicking in um, as well, and the core, bull, uh, core durable good orders coming out at 8.30 a.m. on Friday. Now, let's talk about, um, you know, there's, just, there's a lot of uncertainty obviously happening right now with the markets. They're flying up, they're flying down, and, I mean, they can, you know, change direction on, you know, just in a moment's notice. 
So how are you supposed to keep up with that as a trader and uh, keep your risk in check? And so, you know, one of the things that I obviously tell people a lot is, you know, looking over at Nadex, checking it out, going, hey, you know, look at this, because you can go in and you can, you, know, you can buy, you can sell, but also you can hedge. So maybe you're just trading spot effects. Maybe you're just trading futures. If that's the case, you still may want to go in and check out the possibility of, you know, hedging off. So what would a hedge look like? How would that work? Well, uh, let's say we're looking at the pound right here. Okay, so we got the pound dollar up. And let's say you're long the pound and you wanted to, you know, hedge your position. You wanted to reduce your risk. And right now we have the pound. Let's see. I'll pull up a pound dollar chart. And uh, let me just, I want to give you an actual example of what could you do right now if you were in a trade. And let's say, you know, Banner's about to come out or Reed's about to come out or Obama's, somebody's about to come out with something. And you just want to put on a hedge, you know, which a hedge will cost you a little bit of your profit potential. But the big benefit is it helps uh, reduce your risk overall, and in, in some many cases may help you not have to take a stop loss on a trade. So, anyways, if I'm looking at the pound, and I'm trying to pull up a, a hedging trade on that, so like we had a pound right here, and let me shrink that chart up for you. So, you know, it's trading, and you know we've been sort of in an uptrend going back up towards settlement right here. We bounced right off the deviation level, as you can see, and um, but 59.74. So if that was where I was looking at as a trade that I was going to do, and I wanted to, you know, hedge it off, how can I hedge that trade off and still have a lot of profit potential in the trade? What I'll do is if I bought, I would look to sell and find a low risk spread. Okay. So we got one here. We have one here. So I'm just looking at the literally the risk column at this point. Okay. That's the first thing I'm going to look at is low risk spread. And then I'm going to look at how far is it to break even because that's how far is it to where the market is right now. So that's 59 pips away. That doesn't really do me any good. Uh, this one is four, and that one's 12 ticks away. So basically, my risk is going to be if I go in and I, you know, buy one and sell the other, my risk is going to be basically the difference between the two. So if I buy at 59.73 and I sell at 59, you know, 63, then my risk is going to be 10 pips, and uh, that's my max possible loss on the entire trade. And then my uh, spread itself only has a six dollar risk. So if it moves up six pips then I've made that six pips on the pound. And this would be very similar to show you a graph of going in and doing this right here. So uh, this right here, would look like you're making money on the pound as it's going up, okay? And But you're putting on a short spread in case it goes down. That way you have a lot of up potential, but you're hedging yourself on the downward move. Now at a certain point, you would have to you know close out the long pound contract simply because you know, there is risk there on that contract. But you have to close that out in order to make sure you don't continue taking a loss. But you've covered that loss by going short. This would be like doing a married put on stock, where you buy Apple and you buy some puts on it. Okay? But think of this as options for day traders. If you've ever traded options before, options for day traders. Because you can go in and you're getting trades that expire in the next, you know, eight hours. Why is that important? Why do you want ones that expire in an hour, two hours, three hours, eight hours? Why is that so important to you? Because you want to get that maximum protection, that maximum delta coverage on the trade. And uh, you're not going to get that if you buy an option that expires in a week or a month or whatever without putting up a lot more money because you're going to have to buy either you know a deeper in the money contract, which means you're going to be giving up profit, or you're going to uh, have to buy a lot of premium um, to in order to get your delta high enough to where it's actually hedging you. So, which means you're going to give up a lot of profit. So, by doing this, you can actually give up a very minimal amount of profit, you know, say like six bucks on a mini watt, and that would allow you to go in and uh, hedge your position, like as these news announcements are coming out. Also, you know, we're seeing deviation moves constantly. Uh, and so, on these deviation moves with all this news, I mean, take advantage of them. You go in here, and I mean, you could literally go and it hits a deviation, you could literally just fade the thing right back to the settlement price and uh, shoot for that for end of day. So not a bad move considering, you know, how most of the markets are moving right now. And uh, let's go ahead and check the markets out right now. We'll go ahead and look at the indices. And on the indices, let's see here as this loads up. We got to move uh, basically down to half a deviation. Had a little move up overnight. Not quite half a deviation, but uh, from high to low, we pretty much are almost at the uh, money there. Let's see. Let's measure this one and see just exactly how close did it get. So looking at settlement to one, we got about 17 points, so a pretty big deviation right now. And then going from high to low, we got 14 and a half. So not quite a deviation, but almost a deviation move from high to low. 
But uh, we'll say the, uh, the indices are trying to settle down a little bit. They don't see some big solution in sight. So uh, we'll see how it ends up. They made it hit this half deviation and bounce right back up by end of day. Um, let's go ahead and look over here at the Dow. And uh, check it out. We'll just look at it, you know, how all of them are doing across the board on their deviations, on their volume spikes and everything else. So, again, same, basically the exact same move. Moved on back up, pulling on back down. Not with heavy volume, really light volume as it's moving back down. So, if we'll get a bounce right there off the half deviation move. And then uh, the NASDAQ. So market's looking for some sort of solution and realizing they don't have one at the moment. NASDAQ just uh, flat. I mean, check it out. There's nothing happening right now. So sort of showing some strength compared to the other indices, simply because it's staying right at that settlement line, refusing um, to really, you know, go down below it and stay down. And then last but not least, we've got the small cap 2000 showing the most weakness across the board. That one's moved down, and it has got a full deviation move from low to high. So big thing I'd be looking for right now is any kind of potential volume spike reversal off of these half deviation moves or 0.7 deviation moves on either the Dow, the S&P, or the Russell going into the end of the day. Now, uh, looking over at our commodities, we've got oil. And... Um, on oil right here, what you'll see is that the you know market's been uh, moving on down, and we've only had about a half deviation move. A lot of implied volatility built in today, uh, but again, it moved right down there, just bouncing off of it. A bit, a really big half deviation day, um, meaning the deviations are larger than normal because of the implied volatility. So they're basically saying, hey, there's a lot of expected, potentially expected movement depending upon news that comes out. Um, oh, I pulled up uh, Nasdaq there to pull up the natural gas contract. So, but uh, anyways, but. Energies, metals across the board. Now let's check out gold, because gold, um, not gold, but uh, silver right here, they've been moving massive moves, and there's been some manipulation happening, like literally 5,000 contract orders being put in on gold and then being ripped out of the market. And uh, it's pulling silver down with it. So you see the same thing happening on silver right here. You got a volume spike pushed on up. You got another volume spike. So it pulled on back down, basically went flat into the day. So really on these metals, especially when they're hitting these deviation levels, if you see the volume spike, so that means, again, I define a volume spike. All right, let's just get right here and look at it. Okay, I define a volume spike. Ideally, that's at a one or more deviation move, okay, and that has a volume that is greater than two times each side. So if this was like, say, 100 contracts, this would be 50 or less, and this one would be 50 or less, so the volume before it and the volume after it. So it goes through, it hits the deviation, boom, volume spike. Okay, we'll take that. Then when it breaks the high of this bar right here, that's when we go long. And uh, usually going for just a half deviation move. In this case, I mean, it got an entire deviation all the way back. And then it gave another volume spike, and look how it pulled on back down. So lots of volume spikes happening. Be looking for those um, in multiple markets right now because they can give you some great trade setups um, and all these violent moves happening in the market where things are just flying you know, up and down really fast based upon the latest uh, news release. So right here we got corn and uh, did a great job. Went right on up to one deviation perfectly. Volume spike right there. Pulling on back down. Half a deviation or you know, almost half a deviation up there from high to low. And uh, But definitely at that 0.7 almost hit that half deviation mark for you. So another great reversal trade. And we'll check out ags. Going to look at the soybean market. And uh, you know, even though the moves have not been just massive, they are within expectations um, on most of the markets today. Soybeans being really flat comparatively to the other markets. Now, let's check out a few of our currency pairs that we haven't covered yet. Uh, the yen, which has been um, sort of trying to you know push up overall, um, but it's really interesting because you're starting to see the euro yen turn around and push on back down. But uh, you see, like you know, this big fight in the U.S. yen. It's like nothing happening. But if we go over to the euro yen, let me type this one in, and I just noticed that you know later that if you start looking at some of the things, it's, it's sort of starting to lead um, in a downward move, um, as well as the treasuries are showing the same thing. They're they're not buying into this uh, resolution happening quickly, and uh, see how the euro yen pulling down very fast. So sort of giving you a heads up that the U.S. yen is probably you know going to follow suit. And uh, but anyway, so we see that move right down there to one deviation perfectly on the euro yen. And we can go ahead and we can just check that against the pound yen as well and see if we're seeing the same thing. And uh, you can see how this just really helps you. I have these deviation levels puts things in perspective. And uh, we got about a 0.7 move. So, again, as I'm trading these, I'm, I'm trailing down my stops. It really helps you trail your stops to be ready so when it pulls back, you don't give all that money back. 
And let's check out a couple of the other uh, dollar pairs. We got dollar franc and dollar CAD. And as that chart loads on up, and we'll see if also maybe we have a trade into the end of the day here. We got a uh, dollar franc up a deviation right there before pulling on back. So perfect move on dollar franc. And if we go on into the dollar CAD, we can see what move it made. But you see most markets did hit uh, either you know their half or 0.7 or one, but most of them hit their one deviation mark and uh, bounced and reversed right off of it. So giving you some great trades. Um, check this out on dollar CAD. We got a minus 0.5 to a positive 0.5. So we got a one deviation move. Okay. And um, if I'm using the futures, then, or I'm sorry, if I'm trading, if I'm using Forex, I also want to look over at the uh, futures markets. So I'll go over, say, to 6, you know, C, you know, 12, 13 here. And the reason I do that is I want to look at the volume. Now you can combine the two charts together and only show one of them and all that. But I like to be looking at the volume. They'll be inverted because it's CAD dollars versus dollar CAD um, on the futures. But I want to look at that to see if I see volume spikes happening at deviation levels. So it's a very, very helpful, simple uh, trip or uh, tick <laughs> you can use on that. Now let's go in and let's see if there's anything that we might be able to do um, on the scanner. Okay. So let's pull this up here. And what we're going to do is see if there's any short-term trades on really any of the markets. So uh, we're going to go into, you know, uh, let's see, we'll pull this down. Okay. So bring this down to the next 15 minutes. It says, don't show me anything that's going to expire in 15 minutes or less. And then I'll go in, and I can always do this in, you know, reverse. So if I go in and I don't find the premium collection I like, I can reverse it and do the trend trading trade. And there's a lot of markets. Okay. I mean, literally, there's a whole lot of markets uh, that you can put this on. So it's depending on how many you want to actually go through and look at, how many charts you have open. And when you open it up, you'll be able to see, you know, what possibly exists. How far away is it? And one of the things you can do, we're going to be adding a new feed, and we have to build a new data feed because Nadex now gives you the indicative data inside their chart. We're going to be adding that in um, for two reasons. One, I'm going to add it in where it actually will display right here, so you don't have to open a ticket to look at it. Um, two, it's going to allow us to put in the charts so you can open the Nadex indicative chart directly from the scanner. And then the third thing is so we can add a filter for like distance from the strike. So we can say only show me ones that are less than 10 ticks away from where the um, you know, Nadex indicative index is currently trading. So when you got that, you can open it up. On, you can look at both sides. Okay. So right here. And just looking at you know, where the market's currently trading at. You know, if it moved up or down a point within the next you know, 12 minutes, you know, could you be profitable on the trade? You know, well, you'd lose if you did this as a, you know, premium collection strategy, um, if it did move outside that range. So if it moved above 1701.1 or, you know, below 1699.1. If you think there's a high probability of moving, you can always flip the trade. And that's what I was trying to talk about earlier is being aware that you can always flip this trade around. You can go, you know, I really don't like that risk. I think there's a high probability this thing could move up. I mean, that's not even a couple ticks up. And you can go, you know, I'm going to buy this contract. And you literally set an order right there to buy that. Once you bought it, you can go in and you have a couple choices. You could set a take profit to get out, say, at 43, because that's pretty much what it would be at right as it started to hit right into that area. Um, or, you know, you could hold on to it longer. So on the flip side, you could also sort of strangle it and do it the other way in case it does drop. All right, stay right there. We'll be right back after this break. take a hands-on approach to managing your investments and whether you're bullish or bearish on u.s treasuries the etfs from direction shares are there to help you magnify your perspective bull etfs for a rising market and bear etfs for a falling market direction shares gives you the tools for both sides of the trade discover how we can help at directionshares.com today 
An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Are you ready to ride the next bull market wave? Catch the Chapman Wave. Using the Chapman Wave methodology, Basil's very comprehensive daily newsletter, The Opening Call, gives the short, intermediate long-term analysis for the key indexes. In his Trader's Corner, he gives a brief market summary and expectation for the day with possible trades, both long and short, which are reviewed daily. A position subscribers sold recently for a 42% on part, plus a 64% on rest, at Hertz Global as a core position for six months before exiting the position. A current position entered as a turnaround company with good technicals based on Basil's waveform is trading up to 170% of its entry point as a portion sold earlier for a 21% gain. Subscribers to the opening call can see the Chapman Wave techniques demonstrate and explain daily to educate investors. To get your two-week free trial to the opening call, just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Also, don't miss Basil's program, The Tiger Technician's Hour, Monday through Friday at 11 a.m. Eastern on TFNN. TFNN has just announced a special sale for two weeks only for the Gold Report. To celebrate the 600th weekly issue of Tom O'Brien's Gold Report being published on October 22nd, TFNN is having a special one-time sale. From now until October 22nd only, you can receive 60 weeks of the Gold Report. That's 14 months for only $600. We're offering Tom O'Brien's dynamic weekly newsletter at only $10 a week, which is almost half off the regular monthly price. The Gold Report is published every Tuesday and provides subscribers with Tom O'Brien's expert commentary on the industry as well as detailed information on a variety of mining equities. Take advantage of this one-time special offer and pay only $600 for 60 weeks of The Gold Report. This offer is valid for current or new subscribers. Everyone is welcome to take part in this special promotion as we celebrate the 600th weekly issue of The Gold Report. All the details are on the front page of TFNN.com. Join David White as he keeps you up to date on the latest tech stocks while he uses his Power Law Vector Indicator to identify the best trades. The Power Trading Hour, next on TFNN. All right, so we got a couple of trades on. We uh, going looking at long, whether it be premium collection or an out of the money. You know, it's basically called a double binary if you buy. To them right there, it could be a ratio binary. There's a lot of ways to put it together. Uh, we bought this one 82. It's up at 93 now. So if we want to take profit on that, okay, then uh, we can go in and literally just uh, you know set the take profit and you know at whatever price level we're going to get out at. So let's say we're going to get out at 95. We set that take profit at 95. We hit place order, and um, we basically let the market volatility do the rest for us. Okay. So see, I went from 89.50 to 93.50. And then uh, down here, we got these other ones that we bought right here. We got them for 27 bucks, so we got them set to sell for 43 So as long if the S&P 500 pops up to 1701.1, then it'll be profitable. As long as it stays above 1699.1, then we'll be profitable as well. So on those sides. So basically, it gives us two ways to be profitable on the trade, whether it moves or does not move. One of them helping hedge uh, part of the risk on the other trade for us. So... Uh, 
bring up a chart to explain that a little bit more for you. Let me uh, go over here and grab. Sorry, that's not the chart I want. Okay, so uh, right over here, if we pull this up, go into the S&P. And then I'll show you the strikes and how this works, okay? So right here we're looking for, if it'll move up, I mean, it doesn't really have to move that far, a point. Okay, if we move up one point, then it'll take profit. It doesn't have to even stay up there, just move up there. So move up one point up to 1701, then that contract will take profit. You may have already taken profit, put your order in right away. Um, we we're talking about that. And then also if it'll, the other thing is, can it stay above 1699? So not move down a point. So if it'll stay above 1699, the contract this contract will be profitable. If it moves up at or above 1701, then the bot the upper contract will be profitable. So instead of, you can do range bound where he says it's going to stay in a range. You can do a strangle where you're saying it's going to expire above or below it. Or you could do a double long or double short. So double long being I'm going to use a premium collection to pay for an out of the money binary or a double short where I'm going to use that premium collection to sell to pay for an out of the money short binary. So there's a lot of different ways to put these together and the first thing is just get in there and start demo trading with it. So if you don't have a demo account yet over on Nadex, uh, let me show you how to get one just so you can begin on the path uh, to learning how to do this. But you can, there's so many things to take advantage of inside the uh, Nadex platform that you really, to start grasping this, you have to grab a uh, demo, demo account so you can you know start putting the pieces together. And uh, let's see, got that chart up there. Uh, so right here, what you're going to do is you're going to go to trading. You're going to go to demo trading account. And then under demo trading account, fill in your username. So TFNN, click on the Nadex banner on the right side. Click on trading, demo trading account. After you've done that, then fill in your username, first name, last name, okay, and email address. And click apply for demo. And when you do that, what it will do for you is it will allow you to be able to go in and uh, get a demo account within about 15 seconds. So you can see, you know, what is all, have some fuss about how does this work, and, you know, what can I do to take advantage of it. So on one of the contracts, by the way, I already took profit, just went ahead and closed out just now automatically with my working order. So it's sort of nice, you know, on the radio talking, can't always keep up with those take profit orders, but it went in and did close out uh, one of the contracts for me. Um, and that was the uh, lower one there, the in the money premium collection one that I bought. I bought the sixteen ninety nine, and I went. I took a take profit at ninety five dollars, and so it went in and it grabbed that order and filled it for me. And that helps hedge the cost of my out of the money binary. But if you're wondering how to do this, first step: grab a demo account. Once you get a demo account, start playing with it. Check out the free education they have on there. Hop into the diagnostic box for an analyzer. I have a lot of free education there, and ask me any and all the questions that you have regarding Nadex. I'll be glad to help you out. Okay? Y'all have a great day and I will see you tomorrow. What's the one thing that pulls people back from the breakthrough that they're moving towards? What's the only thing that really stops people from taking action? You and I both know the answer, and sure, we can come up with the reasons why we're not where we want to be, but the only reason that we don't do more with our life is fear. Or if you're an overachiever, call it stress. Simply put, there's something that happened to us in our past that's holding us back from the life we deserve, yet you and I are okay, we're here. So why should we let our past control our future? Exactly. We shouldn't. Hi. I'm Steve Rhodes with TFNN.com, and when it comes to your trading and investing, I can help you overcome your fear of loss. Together, we'll turn weakness into strength with a system I've developed called Mastering Probability. I'll teach you how to make your money work harder for you than you do for it. I'll teach you the tools that provide financial freedom. Go to the homepage of TFNN.com, click on my name, Steve Rhodes, and begin your journey of mastering probability risk-free. It's time to become a pioneer of your future versus a prisoner of your past.